Hey guys, welcome to another video from EcoPoint. And today again, I have some CUET practice questions. Let's try to finish them in five to 10 minutes. Given the following information match the item in list one and list two. So list one, we've got rejecting null hypothesis if it is true, accepting null hypothesis if it is false, probability of rejecting null hypothesis when it is false, measuring sample variability due to random force. And list two consists of beta error, standard error, alpha error, one minus beta error. So what will be the correct answer? If you remember the decision table, your null hypothesis could be true, null hypothesis could be false, and you may accept the null hypothesis or you may have to reject the null hypothesis. When you accept a true null hypothesis, this is a correct decision. This is happening with probability one minus alpha. It's a correct decision. But when you reject the null hypothesis, when actually it is true, this is happening because the statistic that you have found is on the tails and this is a wrong decision and it is happening uh, with the probability alpha. On the other hand, if you accept the null hypothesis when it is false, it's again an error. This is what is called the beta errors. That is the probability of this is beta. And if you take, if you are able to reject the null hypothesis when it is false, it's a very good decision. And this is happening with the probability one minus beta. If you remember this decision table, then you will be able to easily match most of the things here. Rejecting null hypothesis when it is true is alpha. Accepting null hypothesis when it is false is beta. Probability of rejecting null hypothesis when it is false is actually 1 minus beta or power of the test. Measuring the sampling variability due to random force is basically standard error. So therefore, D is the correct answer. The next question. Assertion for normal Distribution mean is equal to median is equal to mode. Reason, normal distribution is mesocortic. Now, the options are both A, R are correct and R is the correct explanation of A. Both A and R are correct, but R is not the correct explanation of A. A is correct, assertion is correct, but uh, your reason is incorrect. Assertion is incorrect, reason is correct. Well, the first thing that you would observe here is that first statement, that is assertion, is definitely true. Because for a normal distribution, mean, median, mode, they're equal. And actually, why is that happening? That is happening because the, there is a 50-50 divide. When it's a normal distribution, there is a 50-50 divide. Okay. So, uh, it's called symmetric. Normal distribution is symmetric. Now, symmetric, when you have a symmetric distribution, normal distribution can also be called mesocortic. A mesocortic distribution is a distribution which has medium tails. Now, that would happen when uh, the height, kurtosis, kurtic comes from kurtosis. Kurtosis is basically the height of uh, the distribution. The height is generally compared to normal distribution. Normal distribution has a kurtosis of 3. So any distribution which is around, which has a kurtosis around 3 is called mesocortic. So normal distribution can also be called mesocortic. And because the distribution is mesocortic, the division is such that mean will be equal to median, which will be equal to mode. Therefore, A should be the correct answer. Uh, assertion is correct. And the reasoning is also correct. The next question, given the two regression lines estimated from the given data uh, as under y equals to 4 plus 0.4x, x is equal to minus 2 plus 0.9y, the coefficient of correlation between x and y will be. Now, once you have the regression lines, what you need to understand is that from here, you can find out what is b, y, x 
that is the regression coefficient of y on x. So from the line y equals to, you will be able to get that that is 0.4. And from the second one, which is x on y, b x on y, you can find out it is 0.9. So once you have that, you need to recall the relationship r, which is the coefficient uh, of correlation, correlation coefficient r is basically equal to the square root of bxy multiplied by byx and therefore it will be the square root of 0.4 into 0.9 that is 0.36 which is 0.6. So therefore c should be the correct answer. Next question. Random sampling implies that, and these are the options. Option one, the observations are selected purposively. This is absolutely wrong. They're, they're not selected purposively. If that would happen, then there would be a bias and it won't be random anymore. So random sampling is done when you don't want any bias in sampling. The observations are selected in a systemic manner. Uh, this could be correct. Why? Because uh, in, even in random sampling, it could be the case that, you know, uh, if say I'm a statistician and I'm trying to collect data on something and I'm choosing every 10th person to collect that data, starting from a very random point, I take every 10th person. So this could be definitely correct. But let's see if we have a better option. The observations are selected in an ad hoc manner. Well, this is not uh, a correct way of taking up observations in random sampling. So this is not correct. The observations are selected in clusters. Well, cluster uh, sampling could be a different thing. So out of these options, I would say B seems to be a more uh, reasonable implication of random sampling. Though in case there would have been some better option, maybe we would have been able to select that. But if these are the four options, then the best option out of this would be observations are selected in a systemic manner to maintain the randomness in the sample. Next quick question guys. Uh, again, we have two lists. List one, list two, we have to match the following. Coefficient of variation, coefficient of Correlation, coefficient of skewness, coefficient of kurtosis. This is like a quick revision of these formulas for you. In the list two, we have mu4 upon sigma to the power 4, mu3 upon sigma to the power 3, sigma upon x bar, and summation xy upon sigma x, sigma y. Well, coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation is standard deviation upon mean. That's what is coefficient of variation. Coefficient of correlation is summation xy upon sigma x, sigma y. Coefficient of skewness. Skewness comes from the third moment. So therefore, second option here, second, uh, you know, in list two, mu3 upon sigma q. And kurtosis is something which we find from the by using the fourth moment. So it's mu4 upon sigma4. So if you look at, at the options, option C would be the correct option. Last question for the day. Let the two regression lines be given as 3x equals to 10 plus 5y, 4y equals to 5 plus 15x. Then the correlation coefficient between x and y is we have just done this kind of question. Let's see what will be the answer. So 3x equals to 10 plus 5y, which means what we have is that sigma this means we can say that b xy is 5 by 3 4y equals to 5 plus 15x. This means byx is equal to 15 by 4. Now, r is square root of bxy into byx. 
So if this is your BXY, this is your BYX, then look at this product. You will be getting square root of 25 by 4. That is, you will be getting 5 upon 2. That is 2 by 5, which is more than 1. How can correlation coefficient be more than 1? So that means this is not correct. This is not the way it will be. So which means the change now will be that your, you, you assumed that so the change here will be, we assume that this is regression line x on y. So we were taking basically x is equal to 10 by 3 plus 5 by 3 y. But instead of that, we will be rearranging and we will be getting that y is equal to 3 by 5 x plus 5 by 3 y. And similarly, the next equation 4y is equal to 5 plus 15x. This will give us x is equal to 4 by 15y minus 5 by 15. So from here, what we get is that byx is equal to 3 by 5. And from here, what we get is bxy is equal to 4 by 15. And now when I find out r, which is square root of bxy into byx, it will be equal to square root of 3 by 5 into 4 by 15. That is square root of 4 upon 25. That is it is equal to 2 upon 5, which is 0.4. And this is an option that you will find 0.4 out here. And of course, you need to know that the sign of uh, R and your BX5, BYX has to be the same. So it is positive. So the correct answer is 0.4. Why I did the wrong way was to let you know that this is possible, that you start working like that and then the answer that you will get will be wrong because correlation coefficient cannot be more than one. I hope these questions will really help you out in your actual paper. All the best, all the times. Thank you very much for watching.